welcome to the Quick Train Modeler video tutorial series. In this module we'll explore some of the basics of working with LiDAR point cloud data in Quick Train Modeler. To load a point cloud data set, I'm going to click on the Open Models button. In this case I have a point cloud in LAS format. I'm going to select it and click Open. Once QuickTrain Modeler has finished loading the point cloud dataset, it will display the point cloud in the viewer window. In this case, my point cloud dataset has LiDAR intensity information. I can turn on and off the LiDAR intensity information by clicking on the toggle vertex colors button. I can choose to display the height coloration by clicking on the toggle height coloration button. If I'd like to change the color ramp applied to my height elevation coloration, I can click on the Configure Height Coloration button. Within the Configure Height Coloration window, click on the Edit Palette button. Here I can select an alternate color ramp. Particularly if you're displaying intensity information, you may find it useful to adjust the lighting conditions. Simply click on the Set Lighting button and adjust either the ambient or the direct intensity. Although Quick Train Modeler offers some custom settings specific to the location, date, and time, generally this information is not applicable for lighting conditions for the point cloud. Statistical information about the point cloud can be obtained by clicking on the View Model Statistics button. This launches the Model Information window. Some of the most useful fields within the Model Information window include the number of points, scale, which is the average spacing between points in the point cloud, and density, which is the number of points per square unit. The unit of measurement for this point cloud is meters. This means that points are spaced approximately 55 centimeters apart, and that they are approximately 3.26 points per square meter. At the bottom of the model information window you can view the histogram for the Z values. Alternatively you can change the histogram to view other point cloud attributes. To zoom in, simply scroll your mouse wheel towards you. To zoom out, scroll the mouse wheel away from you. tilt, hold down the left mouse button and push the mouse either forward or backwards. To rotate the model, hold down the left mouse button and slide your mouse to the left or to the right. To pan the data set, hold down the right mouse button and slide your mouse in the appropriate direction. When zooming into your model, you may find it desirable to adjust the size of the points. To do so, click on the Point Size Options button and use the slider bar to obtain the appropriate point size. It is possible to become disoriented in the point cloud. If that happens, simply click on the Reset View button. Under the Display menu, 
we have options to display axes, the compass, and also the legend. As I scroll my cursor across the QT Modeler viewer, you'll notice that the X, Y, and Z coordinate information is displayed on the bottom of the viewer. Even though I have a point cloud displayed, QT Modeler will allow me to load additional models, such as raster surface models. Simply go to the File menu and choose Add Models. In this instance, I'm going to load a digital elevation model that's in a raster TIFF format. I can toggle between the two models by going to the Display menu, going to Show Hide, and choosing Show Hide Models. Clicking on the model name will display only that model. By holding down the Shift button, I can choose to display more than one model at a given time. I can also flicker between the models by clicking the checkbox for Automate Flicker. To remove a model, simply go to the File menu and choose Remove Models. Select the model you wish to remove and click Apply. Individual point attributes can be queried by holding down the Shift key. This will cause a small red dot to appear by the cursor. Simply click on the point of interest and the point query attributes window is displayed.